Oh, there's a helicopter. That is why they will fine you $5,000 if you get caught flying a drone in this area. Feels like every 10 or so minutes there's a helicopter that flies from the glacier outward. it guys we are making our way down the west coast of the south island of new zealand this was an a section a region of the south island of new zealand that we completely bypassed the last time we were here back in december 2018 uh, we made our way down to the southernmost point of new zealand slow point and then uh, one of our friends george flew down all the way from montreal to meet us up in wellington Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Your phone. <laughs> so we hustled our way back up the east coast, completely bypassing all that there is to offer on the west coast. But um, with three months left on our visa, it's now or never. And there isn't a better time to do this than in the middle of a pandemic where international tourists aren't allowed to go into the country. Uh, so the only people we see since we've begun this trip, it's been about a month now, this road trip around South Island, um, our domestic people. So we met a lot of Kiwis from all over the country and, um, and other tourists, backpackers such as ourselves. So we're still uh, we're one of those fortunate ones that were already in the country when uh, the country closed its borders. So we are staying at the Orange Sheep campsite in Franz Joseph. I guarantee you there's no other campsite that will offer you a better rate on both a powered and a non-powered site. So definitely check out this campsite. They've got great facilities, barbecue, kitchen, and probably one of the most important and handy things is free Wi-Fi. I feel so awkward talking to the camera because it's kind of early in the morning and I think there are people that might still be sleeping. I don't want to wake them up. Uh, just a respectful Canadian in New Zealand, you know? So the Franz Josef Glacier is a 12 kilometer long, see now that I'm in the car I feel more comfortable talking louder. Franz Josef the Franz Josef Glacier is a 12 kilometer long glacier named after Franz Josef, the Austrian Emperor, a German explorer discovered the uh, glacier and named it after the Austrian Emperor. How nice of him. But before it was the Franz Josef Glacier, it was... I have to read this one. Ka roi mata o hine hukatere, that is Tereo for the tears of hine hukatere. Hina hukatere loved climbing the mountains and persuaded her lover Wawe to climb with her. Wawe was a less experienced climber than Hina hukatere, but loved to accompany her until an avalanche swept Wawe from the peaks to his death. Hina hukatere was brokenhearted and her many, many tears flowed down the mountain and froze to form the glaciers, which we will be looking at today. You, uh, we, it is possible, it was possible to walk up on the glaciers. Up until 2012 when the, uh, the interior, the main face of the glacier became rather unstable. So now they only allow helicopters to drop people off there and walk up. If you want to take a helicopter tour, Ling and I looked into it. It's $485 to do a heli hike. It's a four minute helicopter ride that takes you to the top of the glacier. They drop you off with a guide and then you walk around for like three hours, get back on the helicopter and head back. Uh, being unemployed backpackers, 485 is a bit outside of our price point. So uh, we're going to do the next best thing. We're going to do the next best thing, which is we're going to hike up to the glacier as close as we can get, take photos and, uh, and then Instagram it. <laughs> We're here at the Franz Joseph Glacier Valley Walk, an hour and a half return walk. Takes you up to the terminal face of the glacier. You do look good, love. You got the yellow and black going. You look like um like a bee, like one of those honey bees we saw at the hookah honey hive. Are you backing up? I'm gonna sting you. Let's make sure we hydrate, of course. Fill up our water. Hello. Hi. Hi. Shouldn't be that long of a hike, but the sun does feel quite strong today. 
friends, Joseph, and the areas around the Southern Alps, West Coast, whatever. For us, it's a area of four seasons. You'll get four different types of weather. So right now it's sunny. Once those clouds roll in, anything can happen. That's the Southern Alps. That's the West Coast. Hydrate. Don't swear. There are children that watch this vlog. Oh. Oh no, my water. Supplies, water, snacks. Okay. All right, let's go. Hour and a half return. So, Southern Man, what is the update for today? 2,000 meters from the glacier, 30 minutes return. Okay. So it's actually a lot closer. They give different arguments as to why. But I could see people up the valley past the barrier. Oh, like don't cross the barrier? Yeah, pretty much different ways to say. Don't cross the barrier. Don't cross the barrier because you might die. As you can see here, due to the increased amount of chartered helicopters that go up to the Franz Josef Glacier, they either land directly on it or just hover around it and take people touring, getting a nice aerial view. Drones are absolutely foreboding. <laughs> She's beautiful. Unfortunately, this is as far as we can go. It says danger, do not go past here as there could be flooding or a surge wave. I actually thought we would get a lot closer to the terminal face of the glacier. This is as far as she'll allow us to get. Oh well, it's a nice view. I don't think that's enough footage to fill up a full vlog, so we're gonna have to do something else today. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. The glacier went all the way up to here. Hundred years later, it's receded as far back as where we just were. From 1906, it was 13 degrees, and now it's at about, well, 2016, it was 14 point something or other degrees. So the earth is heating is up. Now. We just did the Glacier Valley Walk. Now we're doing what's called the Sentinel Rock Walk. Yeah, it's a 20 minute walk to a higher vantage point to give us another view of the Franz Josef Glacier. Okay, we made it to Sentinel Rock. Go ahead. Moderate climb, yeah right. How's that? Look, this is the prediction of what it's gonna look like in the year 2100. But look at it there. That's pretty much where it is. It's even worse today. In 2020. It's even further back. Oh, that's not a good sign. Oh, it's depressing. There you have it. That's the view from Sentinel Rock. Not much different from the other view. So we're going to check out what? Peter's Pool? The Pool. Peter's Pool. Once upon a time, the Franz Josef Glacier actually touched the Tasman Sea. And then 18,000 years later, it retreated 19 kilometers to where we see it today. That's a pretty significant distance, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty significant. Or one meter a year? One meter a year. A meter a year, that's huge, man. Well, the earth is definitely warming up, you can't deny it. South Island, West Coast region, there's just more and more predictions for precipitation, rain, and that sort of stuff. All the stuff that uh, will force this uh, glacier to recede even quicker. Peter's pool. Where's Peter? <laughs> so this is Peter's pool. Glacier used to extend all the way up until here. So once it receded, what you have here is what's called the Kettle Lake. And that's uh, Peter's pool named after, not Peter Ortaleza. I checked. <laughs> it's named after a nine-year-old Peter Westland. That's Peter Westland right there. And he's camping along the glacier. Good thing we showed up when we did because as you can see the clouds have begun to roll in almost covered the glacier completely and also i'm feeling some raindrops so i think it's going to start raining it might rain anytime any moment now <laughs> 